In this video, I want to share with you the single most important habit I've implemented in my life in the last five years that has helped me exponentially increase the amount of knowledge that I have on certain areas that I care about, which translates into me actually becoming more intelligent and having more to talk about in general interactions at a dinner table and just in, in normal life, you know, and, and actually helps me become more attractive as a man. And I want to share that with you in this video. So how do you become more intelligent? Like, how do you do it? For my whole fucking life, sorry for swearing, my whole life, I felt like I was dumb. Like, I remember, it's an interesting story, like, when I was studying maths at school, I would always fail, right? And I remember we were sitting in the class, me and my, my other friend, Jake, his name is Jake Pepper, and we were the dumbest kids in math class, right? We were so fucking stupid. <laughs> we'd get it all, we'd get everything wrong, right? And I just always thought that I was dumb, like literally from my childhood, like I've, I was just terrible at, at academics. Like I'd, I'd study so hard, but still fail, right? And fast forward, the reason I tell you about Jake Pepper, that guy, is because now he's, he, he runs a hedge fund in Hong Kong. And it's hilarious how the dude who is crap at maths is now crushing it in the finance space where it's all about maths. <laughs> it's quite hilarious. Um, it just goes to show you that, you know, if he's watching this, Jake, man, <laughs> I had to use your story, bro. It's hilarious. It's, it's amazing. It's an amazing story of success, you know? And it's like where you are doesn't have to be where you end up. And whatever you think you suck at, it doesn't matter because you surround yourself with amazing people. You can do amazing things. And now, you know, as a result of him, he, he reads a lot of books too. And he's increased his intelligence, which is why he's able to run a hedge fund. Okay. And it's not just about numbers. It's, hedge fund is about trust. You need people to trust you with their money because you need to put down the numbers. You need to show them that, hey, I'm, I'm good at this stuff. But anyway, I digress. So back at university, I was studying law. Okay. And I remember I basically, I failed seven out of eight exams. And the reason I share that with you is because I was studying so hard for these exams. Like I was really in my books, like trying to memorize all this crap and I still failed, right? So I used to think I was a failure. Like I used to think I'm fucking stupid. I'm... But it's like that Einstein quote. It's like, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it's going to think it's stupid, right? Because a fish ain't meant to climb no tree. <laughs> and that's, I wasn't meant to do law. Like, I just wasn't meant for it. But at the time, I had so much pressure from my family to, to succeed at my academics. But I just, it just wasn't happening. Like, I was such a rebel. And I remember, you know, uh, what was it? Yeah, I remember, <laughs> this is so funny. I remember when I was at school and we used to wear these blazers and I would get these little square pieces of paper in the English exam and open up my blazer and take out this little piece of paper and be like, and, and, and look if anyone's looking and be like, I'd see the answers or the stuff I needed to remember. And guess what? I still failed. I still failed. I, I, fucking, I was fucking cheating the whole exam and I still failed. That's how dumb I was. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's funny looking back at it because... <laughs> just wasn't for me. Like, I'm not that academic at shit I don't care about, right? But, but then my mum would always try and get me to read books, right? And she'd always try and get me to read fiction books. And I was like, I don't want to read fiction books because that doesn't have any real world application to my life. I'd rather read about a fucking snake because I might be in the jungle and there might be a fucking snake and I need to know if it's venomous or not, right? So I was gravitating to the nonfiction books. And that was always a thing for me. Ever since I was young, I was like, I'm, I don't like reading fiction. I ain't reading no Harry Potter bullshit. Like, that's just me, right? And I've always been like that since I was a kid. I remember it vividly. Like, I, I was there with my mum outside my room, and she was showing me some Harry Potter bullshit. I was like, I ain't interested in that. I watched a movie. It's different. But I ain't reading no Harry Potter book. And so after that, what happened is I, I started realizing that, hey, I actually like nonfiction. So I started reading lots of nonfiction books and started getting smarter and actually enjoyed it. And that's how I started enjoying reading is guess what? Go figure. If you start reading what you actually want to read and care about, 
you actually start liking reading. It's like read, to, read until you love reading. It's like read what you like to read. That's a very important hack and habit that if you implement that right now, just start reading. And if you don't like reading, like me, I like reading, but it, sometimes I just, I'm so busy, you know, like I like to use what Tony Robbins calls no extra time. So basically that means like if you're driving, you can listen to an audiobook as you're driving. So then you, now you're actually learning whilst you're, you know, doing something, you're in transit. Like if you're cooking, like you can listen to an audiobook. So you're doing something, but you're also learning at the same time, right? Like if you're in the gym, you're doing something, but you're also, you got your headphones in and you're listening to an audiobook. And this habit, the last five years, I've read so many books. I can't remember, I don't count how many books I read, but I've read a lot. And it's because of that, it's because I, I listen to audiobooks on 2x speed. And that's another thing, it's like 2x speed, I'm learning twice as fast. And I train my brain to understand information at 2x speed. So how do I do that? First of all, I start at 1.2, 1.5, 1.75, then 2x, right? So you give it a week at each at each speed and you just gradually increase it. It's like lifting weights. It's like you start on body weight, then you start increasing the weight with the barbell and then adding a couple plates. And then all of a sudden you're, you're, you're squatting or bench pressing like your body weight or double body weight, right? And that's how you do it. You progressively overload it until you can do 2x speed. That's just my personal preference because I like the idea of learning in twice as fast. Like everything I watch, uh, all the, apart from Netflix and if I'm watching a movie, I'm listening to 2x speed. I'm watching YouTube videos on 2x speed. I'm listening to audiobooks on 2x speed because that's gonna help me learn faster. So I'm all about the speed of learning. And also another point I will share on this is deep knowledge, right? So Rather than being the guy that's, you know, waving his dick around, being like, hey, I, did, I read 100 books, whoa, whoa, look at me. It's like, who cares? I don't care. I'd rather read 10 books 10 times than read one book, 100 different books, right, one time. I'd rather read 10 books 10 times than 100 books one time. And that's just my personal preference because I like to go deep and have deep knowledge, right? So... That's how I'm able to apply what I learn, like the habits, for example, Atomic Habits is one of the books that I, is in that category for me. And it's like, <laughs> one of the things, this is kind of digressing, but it's on point still. So one of the things from Atomic Habits that I learned, it's a story that applies to it. It's um, this guy called Dan Kennedy, he's the OG of marketing. He said when he was helping firms sell, um, you know, the home workout uh, box thing, right? It's like you. He said the number one thing that helped that product sell was the ability to fold it up so it could be slid under your bed, right? So that is, if you're sliding your workout, home workout apparatus under your bed, guess what? That's out of sight. Out of sight, out of mind. That's a, that's a rule of life, right? And so you're making it harder to fulfill that habit. So let's say you want to work out, but your apparatus is under your bed. Now that's friction. You're creating friction to doing the thing that you want to do because now you've got to pull it out, you've got to assemble it, and it's, it's just more work that you're creating. So of course, the habit is not that easy to do. It's not obvious, right? So this is the thing about Atomic Habits. He talks about the habit being easy and obvious and attractive, right? So that means that this apparatus is already set up so you don't have to do anything. That's why people like home gyms because it's already set up. So this is a, something that is very important. Like if your guitar, like I have a guitar in the corner there. If your guitar is under your bed in the packet, it's gonna be harder to commit to playing the guitar every day because you're gonna to have to take it out. And it's, human beings like the path of least resistance. So it's too, too much work. Like you're just gonna be like, oh, it's too much work. And so these are little things that I got from books. I'm sharing this with you because that's something that I know for sure because I've implemented it in my life and it's from a book. And the only reason I know it so well is because I had to implement it in my life. Okay, so that's the value of going deep with the knowledge, reading 10 books 10 times, right? So um, there's lots of examples I can give on that. I, I guess I'm gonna use that for another video, but how to become more intelligent simply for me, it was two things. As I share with you, number one, I've, I've expanded on that, but obviously number one is reading books, listening to books, right? That's, that's one. And number two is surrounding yourself with smart people. 
I said, that's a huge hack. And not just that, but listening. So surrounding yourself with smart people and having the humility to listen more than you talk. Because one of my favorite leaders in the world is Sir Alex Ferguson. He was the manager of Manchester United for, I think it was 25, 30 years. And he was like one of the most successful football managers. Football, by the way, in England is called football. And all of, the, all of the weird people call it soccer. <laughs> but it's actually called football. All the Americans are like, no, man, it's called soccer. No, it's called football. <laughs> Anyways, um, so he was saying you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. And one of his, it was funny because reading his book, his book's called Leading. Again, I'm talking about how I became more intelligent, how to become more intelligent is by learning from people like him. So, and, and again, another thing is, I'll get back to what I was saying, but another thing that I've realized in reading books is that a lot of, a lot of the things that I already believe about the world are that these people that I look up to who have achieved amazing things in their life, there's not much diff... Okay, I've got to not sound like a dickhead here. The, the intangible things that they share, like the things I already know to be true about life, they're the same. Like, we both believe the same thing. So, for example, Alex Ferguson said, you know, you've got two eyes and one mouth. You should observe more than you talk, right? Simple rule of life that I figured out already. And he said, you've got two ears and one mouth. So you should listen more than you talk. And he said, if you can hone those two skills and not have that... A lot of people have this urge to interrupt when they're listening to someone. It's like, no one fucking listens to people. They just want to listen to talk. And it's really annoying. And that's why I swore, because I want to get across to you that if you just shut the fuck up and listen to someone without trying to butt in and let them finish their sentence, you will transform your relationships. That's another thing. It's like reading about how to communicate is, is amazing. Like it's, it's, it's helped me so much. Like I just shut the fuck up and listen to people. And it's like, they just want to keep talking. You know, you, if you actually go and watch my podcast, you know, you'll see this in action. You will see how the guest just keeps fucking talking, which is amazing. I want them to do that. And the effect that has on not just me, but them. The more someone talks, the more comfortable they are with you, right? So why wouldn't you want them to keep talking? And also, the other thing is, what it does for you is it actually helps you learn at a faster pace, right? You're going to become more intelligent when you listen to smart people, right? And if you just listen and keep asking questions, they will tell you everything. So Alex Ferguson actually said, well, I should say Sir Alex Ferguson, he said, uh, it's like a free university for life when you master listening. And I love that, I love that phrase, how he articulated that. It's so true. That's how I feel. Like I can learn anything just by listening, just by listening to someone and genuinely being curious about it. That's why I seek out people that are doing things I actually inter I'm, I'm interested in. Because you can turn this on for shit you don't even like, like World of Warcraft. Like, I don't like that shit, but I could listen to someone talk about it who's really passionate about it, but I don't want to do that because I don't care about that, right? So I only apply this skill to things that I actually like, all right? And this is something that I don't see many people talking about, right? Like, you know, relationships is a topic that is so... Relationships is life, right? And... How to have amazing relationships is to be a good listener and uh, not just listen, of course, you obviously have to add some sort of value by talking, but you know, listening without judgment is, I think that's such an underrated skill in life. And you know, becoming more intelligent is, you can become more intelligent just by shutting the fuck up and listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I'm sharing this stuff. But, you know, this is the, there's a lot of stuff I can share about communication, relationships, and, you know, empathy, and all of this stuff that in business is very important. And a lot of people, like I had a guy call me, um, he's making like 200K a month. He wants to scale to a million dollars a month. And he, he doesn't know how to do it because he knows that it's a people problem that he's having. His staff don't really like him. And um, he watched one of my videos on how to genuinely care for other people. And he's asking me, how do I be more empathetic? And because, um, again, for him, it doesn't come naturally because of how he was raised and, you know, how he's achieved what he's achieved without being empathetic. But now he realizes that the, the toll that's having on his relationships, his, his wife, his kids, 
you know, his employees. Like, he doesn't really have that connection that he wants in his life. And this is a massive topic that I can go into more if you want me to. So let me know in the comments if you want me to make a video on that about empathy and, you know, empathy in the workplace and all that kind of stuff. Because this is the real shit, man. Like, relationships is the game. Like, if you, if you hurt yourself right now and you've got to go to the hospital, how many people are going to be by your bedside? Like, that's, that's wealth for me. Like, that's real wealth. And a lot of people, like, they haven't resolved their trauma, so they're just workaholics. They just work so much and everything in their life goes to shit. But the one thing that's going well is they're working and they're making money. But actually, they don't have solid relationships. And I'd argue that's the real wealth in life. So um, how to be more intelligent. <laughs> I'm digressing in so many things. I can talk about so many things. But uh, if, you watch that, if you watch to the end, if you're watching this right now, let me know what you want to hear more of, you know, like I can talk for hours on things, uh, whatever topic you want me to talk about, whether it be the three areas of life, right? Health, wealth, relationships. I don't really talk much about wealth. Of course, it's important, but I'm not the foremost expert on that topic. What I spend a lot of my time doing is mastering my health and my relationships because I feel like that's the foundation of life. Of course, you need money. Yeah, that's fine. Of course, you do that. You need that. But, you know, without health, you don't have anything. And without relationships, like, what's the point, you know? What's the point? Because you don't have anything, anyone to share your life with. Of course, you need money, of course. I'm not saying that, obviously. But um, yeah, foundations of life, you know, becoming more intelligent in these areas is going to really help your life. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you watched to the end, comment what you'd like to see more of, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Ciao.